Have you ever asked yourself, what do the people around me need? When you start to pay attention, you'll see needs everywhere. Maybe your bus driver needs your smile, someone in your town probably needs a meal, or maybe some warm socks. The new kid at school might need a place to sit at lunchtime. Your sister might need a listening ear, and for you to zip it while she talks. Your friend who's struggling with science may need a study pal. Maybe your cousin could use a cheerleader at a soccer game. Go, Garrett, go! And I can guarantee your mom or dad needs a helping hand. When you practice looking for what people need, you'll start to see it everywhere. But seeing is only the first step. Once you see a need, then you can do something about it. You can show God's love by meeting some of those needs. Now, we hear about needs all over the world, and sometimes we can help, like sponsoring a child so they can have food and the school to go to. But most of the time, it's about showing love to the people right around you. God can give you the vision to see and the creativity to help the people you see every day. When you care enough to do something about someone else's needs, it's like shining a light so others can see God at work. That's why compassion is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
Welcome to Story Lab. Oh, oops. Ah, whoa. Well, this week we're taking a look at the way God wants us to shine, but not directly in people's eyes. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. And this month, we're talking about how trusting and following Jesus changes the way we treat others. So we can live bright. Not that kind of bright. Oh, I was exploring in our attic at home. There's no good light up there. Find anything? Oh, indeed I did. I excavated this piece of ancient technology. Oh. It plays music. How? Does it have a Wi-Fi connection? Uh, uh, you have to feed it one of these. Oh, right, CDs. <laughs> Can we play one? Nope, the batteries are corroded, but I discovered something fun. Here, see how it catches the light? Yeah, <laughs> rainbow colors. Uh, here. Uh, you hold this. Okay. Um, lights, please. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> Very cool. The CD is just like a prism. Uh-huh. When white light hits a CD, the fine circular lines on its surface diffract the light, which is separated into all the colors of the rainbow. Thank you for enlightening us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've got another bright idea. Huh? No? Oh, I'm gonna need your headlamp. I'm in. You ready? Let's do it! So, I was brick building with my little sister yesterday, and we created this. Ho, ho, ho. What have we here? Welcome to the Light Maze Challenge! I see a maze, I see a light. What's the challenge? This is us. <laughs> We're bricktastic. You and me, we're stuck in the dark here in the center of the maze. Oh, it's not dark. Well, it will be when we turn off the lights. Oh. Your challenge is to direct this light in such a way that it goes along each pathway in the maze until it reaches us right here in the middle. So we're mastering light? Let me reflect on that. Aha! Reflection! <laughs> Mirror, mirror, in the lab. Who's gonna beat this challenge that's fab? Okay, that is a terrible run. Uh, also, you have 60 seconds to set up the maze. Ready? Like a light bright. Speaking of which, lights out. And... Go! Oh. Put that there, perfect. All right, that goes there. It's already reflecting. Yes, look at that. Nice, nice. Just a little bit more. I can see the light. There it is. It's almost reached us. And done! <sighs> You've managed to beat the challenge and rescue us <laughs> from the pedal of the dog. <sighs> Lights! You did it! Amazing! <laughs> As light enters the maze, it reflects off each mirror in order until it reaches us in the center. <laughs> oh, thanks for making my day just a little bit brighter, bro. Anytime. <laughs> Speaking of brighter, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew was one of the four books called the Gospels. These books tell stories from the life of Jesus. Matthew was written down by one of Jesus' followers, a tax collector whose life was turned upside down by his friendship with Jesus. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. Many sick people were desperate to be made well, and Jesus healed them. But Jesus also cared about people's hearts and minds. So he showed them what it looks like to shine God's light by loving others. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. As Jesus began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing, great crowds gathered. And one day, Jesus sat down on a mountainside to share with his followers what it truly looks like to live for God. 
The truth that Jesus taught there has come to be known as the Sermon on the Mount. And today we're going to take a look at something Jesus said about us. You are the light of the world. Yeah, you, me, everybody who follows Jesus. We are the light of the world. <laughs> yeah, it's a powerful picture. But the light Jesus was talking about doesn't require batteries. See, Jesus later told his followers that he is the light of the world. Jesus is the source of all light, just like the sun. And we don't have our own light. But just like the moon reflects the light from the sun, we can reflect the light of Jesus to the world around us. Jesus had more to say about how we can be light. A town built on a hill can't be hidden. Now, we don't know if Jesus was referring to a specific hill, but from where he sat, it's likely he could see a fortress on one of the highest mountains in the land. In fact, cities and towns were often built on high ground at that time, where they could be seen by all the surrounding area. Now, fire up your imagination for a moment and picture this. You've been traveling all day, and you're hungry and exhausted. What's more? It's getting dark and you can barely see the road ahead. Oh, you desperately need a safe place to spend the night. And at last, you look up and there in the distance, you see a town high on a hilltop, glowing with light. It changes everything. Now you know exactly where to go and how to get there. There is a lot of darkness in our world right now. But together, those of us who follow Jesus can be like that town on a hill. When we look for the needs of those around us and choose to help, we shine the light of Jesus for everyone to see. Jesus finished with another word picture. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. And they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Every day we each have the opportunity to be light, like a lamp. And as we all know, it's not helpful to cover up a lamp. So not helpful. Here's how you fit in. God has given you love, forgiveness, joy, and a unique set of gifts. And if you don't share those things, it's like sticking a cover over your light. But when you do choose to share what God has given you, then you reflect the light of Jesus. Maybe your mom is having a super stressful day and you might take a few minutes to help her out. That small act of kindness can remind your mom that God is always with her even during a hard day. Or maybe there's a kid in your class who's been really quiet lately. You can offer a word of encouragement and be willing to listen or even just sit with them. That kind of light can remind someone that they are valuable and deeply loved by God. When you choose to share what God has given you and love like Jesus, you shine light everywhere you go. The end. Gotta be real. Some days I feel more like a burnt out bulb than a bright light. I mean, I don't know if I want everyone looking at me. Oh, that's okay. I mean, being a light doesn't have to mean lots of pressure to be perfect. So, what's... what's our part in the story. Well, because Jesus is the light of the world, our job is simply to follow in his steps and reflect his light by showing compassion to the people around us. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. So I guess the first step is really just paying attention. That's right. You can ask God to open your eyes to the needs of the people in your life. And meeting those needs may be very simple. Like giving up a few minutes of your recess to help a friend find their lost water bottle. Or taking some of the cookies you and your mom baked to the lonely neighbor next door. What about a smile? Oh, for sure. I mean, a friend is bored or bummed out, sometimes sharing a simple smile is enough to change their mood. It all comes back to keeping your eyes open and loving like Jesus. You've definitely got it. Boop. See you next time. So, here's the thing, you can shine God's light. And you can do it in amazing ways. You know, I bet we can make this even more epic. Ooh, I got more bricks. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Okay, you oh, think yeah, we yeah. should like uh, make a roof? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We can use this. Um, I'll put that on my corner there. Yeah.